recording. So we're here with Kurzweil R&D engineer John Richmond, uh, who has his hands uh, deep into the new Forte stage piano slash performance synth. And I uh, want to talk a little bit about how the technology in this offers a little more horsepower than the PC3K and previous Kurzweil synths. Sure, great. Uh, so basically, the, there's a couple of different components that make up uh, the Forte, but basically the, the heart of it is flash play, which is our new patent technology, which allows us to access gigabytes of uh, sample data, um, far more than you know, we've ever been able to access. And uh, it's, it's very expensive. The Forte is actually a 16 gigabyte system, um, but it can certainly grow beyond that. It's simply limited by the amount of memory we're going to put in the platform. So uh, I expect us to continue to develop that and grow that. Uh, so the flash play is the first part, you know, the sort of sample access, but uh, at the core of it is vast, as, you, as we've known it, um, the flexible variable architecture. Um, system that we've had for over 20 years and so uh, basically the samples can go into the system um, uh, we call them the Mara chips which are these custom designed ASIC chips that we, we do. Those are your, your, your CPUs by, by Yeah actually more uh, the oh. DSP you know the right. real-time DSP processing so you know. Yeah they're, they're designed for, for processing large amounts of audio in real time. Yeah yeah and note by note you know individual DSP per note um, on every key so it's really powerful and uh, on something like the PC3K we've had two of those chips which gives us a lot of power it's, it's both synthesis and effects and on the Forte we've increased that to three chips which gives us uh, much more DSP and a lot more flexibility to, to uh, you know to use wherever it's needed basically it's, it's not quite a dynamic system but it's uh, we as programmers can make it you know I guess as expressive as it needs to be per program or per layer component of our system and um, you know so with the Forte and the three Mara chips we get uh, 32 units of effects which is twice what the PC3 has twice what the KSV has um, and, and some it, effects use more units than others if they're more complex time -based sure effects, like yeah that, yeah we uh, okay. you know and there's you know we have a lot of effects development we have 275 unique algorithms in our effects hundreds of presets and then you can change those chain those presets into what we call chains so uh, Literally endless possibilities, thousands of uh, combinations of all these effects. On the Forte, we actually made a very conscious effort to kind of, because we have enough effects power, we can actually always have a distortion or a phaser or a chorus, a delay and a reverb in a single chain. You can do other things than that, but one thing we strive for is to put these controls with a you know in-out button or a bypass right on there and a send level to each of these effects that I'm talking about. So um, we've made a pretty strong effort to try and consistently program this. So even the acoustic piano, you can turn into a completely distorted pad or anything you want, uh, all via the front panel real-time controls and uh, simply you know, hit the save button and you just capture the state of the unit as it is there. That, that, that was the, yeah, if you change uh, entry values on your, on your effects to something you, you like, mm -hmm. uh, you can hit save, hit save again. Exactly, two button and presses and, and there you it's captured. Saved all, all those entry values. And so really it opens up a lot of um, a lot of, I don't want to call it editing possibilities, but a lot of people have said, you know, I want to change the effects, but I don't want to edit. And for a while that confused me, but really what I think what they want to do is just modulate or change the sound in some way, but not get into the deep uh, menu editing system that a lot of a lot of products have or a computer might have. So this, it's all kind of laid out for you and it's very flexible, but it's also simple. And it's really easy to just enable and turn up something or turn down something and save it uh, to your heart's content. I don't see a button called edit. Nope. But well, there is a, technically a oh, soft button. There's a soft button called edit. There it is. And that'll give you access to yep. the parameters so you can remap from uh, you know any controller to any other controller. You can change the entry, va entry values manually if you want. But I personally find it easy to just move the sliders into listen to what I'm you know, going for, and when I'm happy with it, save, save, and you're done. You know. uh, unlike, for example, a, a K2600 or, or something like that, it's not, it's, or a PC3K, oh, yeah. it's not designed for you to get, get deep into the vast and change a sound's vast algorithm or change the blocks within the algorithm. Correct. Um, on this unit, uh, you know, uh, it's, it's designed for performance, so we've really made a lot of conscious decisions to make everything easy and at your fingertips, you know, transpose buttons right on a physical button, favorites so you can quickly access your favorite sounds and you know this there's a lot of sounds in there but we did want to make it ultimately simple for the people who are going to just you know the drummers already started the the, right. the, the count off yep. and you know you got to find the sound quick to, to start the song so 
Um, so we've made a conscious effort to that, but that doesn't mean that you, you, you know, the sound tower editor that we have, um, which is uh, an external editor for either, you know, computer, standalone, iPad, tablet, or a, as a VST plugin, that gives you full editing, particularly the Very standalone cool. editor yep. gives you the full, deep, vast editing. So if you want to do stuff with, like, if you say, oh, I love the set, I love the set sound, but I want to do some, you some, add some stuff uh, with the modulation matrix, for example. Yeah, yeah. <coughs> Yeah, well, if you simply want to just do something with modulation, you could do that actually on the front panel. But if you want to change the wiring or, yeah. you know, change the waveforms or add layers or mix part of this sound with the other sound, uh, you know, that's the, our thinking was that, you know, you want to do that a little bit offline, not in, in um, you know, yeah, you want to think about this a little bit. And you want a wider screen yeah. so that you can actually, you know, see what you're doing. Yeah, and, um, you know, so... The unit itself, uh, I mean, you know, it's built for performance and stage stage ready, but, uh, you know, no, it's uh, 48 pounds. 48 pounds is what it is, which is less than a PC3. And, it's built to... Uh, fully weighted keyboard. Still pedaling like a tank here with a metal. Yeah, yeah, and uh, aluminum on the bottom to try and keep the weight down, because we know so people are going to be gigging with this. Giant piece of plywood with clips. Yeah, which exactly. I, yeah. Exactly. But, you know, um, there, right now we're at... Uh, a little over 300 programs, we're continually adding them to them, so, you know, always check Kurzweil's website for more sounds, and uh, it will, it's fully compatible with the PC3, so, you know, you can load sounds from the PC3, but, you know, the core of it is the flash play, and if, uh, you know, one thing we've done is if you're not familiar with the idea that we were going with on a given preset, it's very simple to, uh, you know, something like the... First of all, there's two different modes here. You can switch by category or select, you know, the old Kurzweil way by typing in whatever number. If you mm -hmm. know exactly what mm -hmm. you're going to, you could do that. So That's pretty much how I, I interact with my K2000 for Yeah, and some people like that, gigs. and some people don't, you know, so I don't know what you're doing. So uh, if I were to go to you know, something like this, so every program in here, you know, you could obviously, we invite you to play it, but, uh, you know, maybe you're, you're not a player of a certain sound or you didn't have an idea of what we were going for. <laughs> Every sound in here has what we call a per program demo. So you know, right. uh, you know, you could just scroll away, and you know, we put a lot of. We've been tr trying to increase our library of demos. Just so, you know, we may be, we may not be able to uh, demonstrate it in every case, but what we're doing is allowing it so that it can self demo. You know, and there's a there's a lot of power under there, but uh, you know, there's also a lot of great sounds that we're trying to get across to the user. So, like I said before, the heart of it is sort of this flash play, this large capacity gigabyte system. Most of the, what we call the bread and butter keyboard sounds, you know, the, uh, the two new pianos, the, uh, you know, several new electric pianos, um, all of them are at least eight dynamics. They all have release samples. Uh, the pianos have damper sample, you know, damper noise, yeah. pedal down, pedal up. You know, all the things that you'd expect at a real, you know, uh, high-end level type of a keyboard like this. But, you know, at the same time, we're trying to focus on what the user really wants, you know, immediately. And at Kurzweil, we're trying to match, you know, the action to the sound and marry that thing so that it's an enjoyable instrument, you know, in terms of an experience. TP40L Pitar. Yep, it's a Pitar TP40L, um, which is trying to balance the, you know, pianistic weight with playing it on a synthesizer as well. So uh, Has aftertouch. Has aftertouch, yep, and uh, you know some of the uh, synths and the brass programs really show that off really nicely. So yeah. Chris has done a really good, good job at uh, showing off some of the potential of that. Uh, so it's very powerful, but you know I'd like to say intuitive too. You know, so very cool. Looking so forward to doing our, our full review, getting our hands on one. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, uh, I want to get you one and <laughs> take it for a long ride, is what I would recommend. And uh, you know, as soon as we do, we'll, we'll tell you what issue it's going to be in. Uh, and uh, thanks. This is uh, from what I. The little bit that I've heard just today, uh, it sounds really huge, really clean, unless you want it to sound dirty, of course. Exactly. And, uh, <laughs> Press the button, you can dirty it, it also, up. It also <laughs> has full, full KB free mode with the um, the uh, tone wheel and rotary emulation organ programs uh, that sounds very, very good. Uh, their best incarnation yet. And the synth engine, you know, synth waves from the VA, and the virtual analog section, so... All interchangeable. We've married it all, and you know the the multi mode, which is where we get into multi timbre mode. It's really a nice way to you know, 
to show off. Yeah, so the virtual analog waves, your sawtooth and so forth, aren't, you know, little samples. They're virtual analog modeled emulations mm -hmm. because really, whether you're modeling or, or playing back a sample, um, it's just a question of what you task those DSPs to do right, right. Uh, in a given moment. And this nice, is thing, plenty of them. nice thing about this is you can do both. You know, yeah. There's definitely plenty of examples where we're mixing a virtual waveform with a sampled waveform, yeah. and you, know, you get a different texture that you'd never be able to get in the uh, analog domain. So, you know, again, it's, uh, it's flexible architecture, so we can mix piano samples with the synthesis uh, and the effects. It really is a nice combination. Well, the opposite of the K2000 was the first virtual modular synth before anyone really was using that kind of language. Right. And right. this this still continues to benefit from that design philosophy. Exactly. Uh, we're just trying to push that forward with a larger sample set, um, you know, so that we're not limited by the size anymore. We're just hoping to be limited only by your imagination to, to get the yeah. sounds we want. So we continue to... We will continue to keep moving forward with this for sure. Awesome. So again, I'm looking forward to digging into this one personally. So uh, keep watching the website, keyboardmag.com. Keep your eyes on the print mag for the full review soon, and uh, we will be seeing you.